All of us have a story, and today, I'm going to tell you mine. I was born in a small town near Dayton, Ohio on the spring of 1986, which is pretty cool because spring is my favorite season, along with summer, winter, and fall. One day, somebody figured out that my eyes weren't normal. I don't know who figured it out, but someone was playing with me and I guess I wasn't following their fingers and they kind of put two and two together like, you know, he never really looks at anybody directly. They always fight over who tried to figure it out, like it was some sort of Nobel Prize discovery. I don't know. Anyways, I was taken to the eye doctor and it was discovered that I was completely blind, according to the doctor. He said that I would never be able to see. And since I'm in a Christian family, everybody was sad and everybody was praying. And they took me back to the eye doctor a few months later and he said, well, now he's got sight in his right eye, just a little bit. So I don't know, maybe the eye doctor made a mistake, but my family and I have always thought it was a miracle. So. I always say a prayer every day thanking God for the little bit of sight that I do have. Both my parents were 19 when I was born, so they were pretty young, and they were pretty heavy into the party scene, especially my dad. He was an alcoholic and he would get angry when he got drunk and he'd beat up my mom a lot and they'd fight all the time. The irony is, is that they got a divorce on their first year anniversary, and then my dad pretty much was never really a part of my life. So I grew up with my mom, and she did alright, she loved me and she took care of me, but I wouldn't say I was always her number one priority. She was still pretty occupied in her own life, into the party scene, and she'd date different guys and they'd move in with us, some for a couple months, some for a couple years. They were all kind of losers. They definitely weren't dads. But every weekend I get to go and spend it with my grandparents, and they were awesome. I mean, they really loved me. They were more like parents to me than my own parents, and when I look back, I realize that they were the ones that raised me, and I love them for it. I also had a pretty cool aunt that I go see every weekend as well. She used to take me to church every Sunday, and she taught me all about Jesus and living right. I mean, seriously, if I ever get to say that I'm a good person, I'd have to thank her for it. We were really close. She taught me all about computers, and I'm talking to old school, too. You see, back in my day, we didn't have iOS, we had DOS, and we called it DOS, and we used to have to type in commands and stuff, and we like it, darn it. Young whippersnappers don't know how good you got it, you just press the button and things just pop up like nothing. Like it's some kind of magic, I tell you. But yeah, I spent all my time on the computer. I loved it. We used to have a program where you can make cards and posters and stuff like that. I can't remember what it was called, but it wasn't Photoshop. I used to make stuff on there all the time. Like every time somebody had a birthday, I'd make them a card on there. I loved doing stuff like that. I was a pretty well-behaved kid, and I was really polite. Like I used to walk up and talk to total strangers all the time. I'd walk up to them and say something like, Hi, I'm four years old and I'm weakly blind. Everybody seemed to like me. And it was the same in school too. I was friends with everybody, especially the kids that didn't have any friends. I don't know. I guess I always just felt like everybody needed somebody, you know? In first grade, I asked a girl to marry me. She turned me down. I was pretty tore up about it. But it was okay because I still had the girl at church. We used to hold hands every Sunday. So I guess you could say things were getting pretty serious. And I don't know what happened, but I guess I was a pretty smart kid too. When I went to the fourth grade, they said that I had done so well in the third grade that they wanted me to skip on to the fifth grade. But I was like, no way dude, I've got friends in my grade, I'm not going to skip the 4th grade. Which was a good idea because I did so well in the 4th grade that I got nominated for an award. It was called the Yes I Can Award and it was given to kids who had challenges like disabilities like, you know, visual impairment like me and still did academically well, like above and beyond. So yeah, that was, was kind of a big deal, you know. But school wasn't always easy. Even though I had a lot of friends and I was liked by all my teachers, not everybody liked me. And since I had a visual impairment, I guess that made me an easy target for bullies. I used to get made fun of and picked on a lot, and even beat up on occasion. I'd always try to do the right thing and turn the other cheek, but sometimes it was just too much. I'd go and tell the aides and they'd just tell me to quit whining. They'd even send notes home to my mom saying that I was a tattler. So I'd go to school and get beat up and then come home and get in trouble for tattling. For doing exactly what I was told, which was go and tell somebody. This went on for a long time until my mom finally recognized that I was telling the truth. And then she used the bigger bully tactic, which means she told me that if I didn't go to school and whip all those kids, I'd come home and be the one getting the whipping from her. And since I was more afraid of her than I was the bullies, I went to school the next day and gave them a beatdown of a lifetime, and I was never picked on ever again. So going against my nature and breaking all the rules, that's how I overcame the bully problem. It's a bit ironic when you think about it. Around that time, my dad came back into my life. We used to hang out a lot, my mom agreed to let me go and stay with him a couple days a week. We got really close, we'd play video games, we even beat Contra, we had to use the 30 life cheat, but we didn't care, we had a lot of fun. We got kinda close, but 
No surprise, he took off again, and I haven't seen or heard from him since then. In the same year, my mom was dating this guy, and he was the biggest jerk of all. He talked her into moving to Texas with him, and she was going to take me with her, but my grandma saw that this wasn't a good idea. The environment would have been rough for me, and being away from my family and around the party and then drinking and drugs just wasn't a good idea. So since she couldn't convince my mom to stay, she convinced her to go and leave me behind. And that's exactly what my mom did. Like I said, I wasn't always her number one priority. In the same year, both my parents walked out on me. It was a pretty hard time to be completely honest, but I made the best of it. And I was with grandparents that loved me, so if I didn't have them, I probably wouldn't have gotten through it. One year later, I got some exciting news. I found out that I had a baby sister, and I was so happy. So I went with my grandma down to Texas to see her, and we hit it off immediately, and the thought of leaving her made me really sad. But luckily, my grandma convinced my mom to come back home, so she brought my baby sister with her and left that loser behind. And since I wanted to live with my sister, I moved back in with my mom. It was a happy time. I used to come home from school and she wouldn't let me go to my room until I spent a couple hours hanging out with her. We used to watch Teletubbies and Barney and I hated every minute of it but I wanted to be a good brother. I used to feed her and rock her to sleep and we'd take naps together and I remember her first word was Bubby. I remember when she walked for the first time because I must have spent hours with her trying to get her to crawl but she just wasn't getting it. But by God she sure as heck pulled herself up and started walking one day. Two days after Christmas that year. My sister passed away. She was 10 months old, and I wasn't there at the time. Because she was sleeping in a bed, and not in her crib where she belonged, she fell between the footboard and the mattress, and suffocated. I was devastated. The person that I loved more than anything in my life, and the person that made me happier than I had ever been, was gone. It was the hardest thing I ever went through. That changed me a lot. I was pretty sad. I wasn't as outgoing as I used to be and I kept to myself. I didn't have all the friends that I used to have and I wasn't as popular as I used to be. I had been through so much already, my parents and everything else. Losing my sister just kind of was hard to deal with. I changed my mom a lot though. She got a lot more responsible. I think it kind of gave her a wake up call. She ended up getting married to the guy she was with and now I had a stepdad. He was pretty cool too. He taught me all kinds of stuff. He taught me how to shave. He taught me not to be afraid of thunderstorms. And he even helped me get through my first breakup, which, needless to say, was pretty rough on me. We started going to church together, and I got into the youth group there. Having bad eyesight never really bothered me up until now. But now it was really hard because other kids were doing things that I couldn't do, like learning how to drive and playing sports, and I started to feel pretty discouraged, and I had gotten pretty shy. I mean, all my friends were driving around and going out on dates and had girlfriends, and I was home most of the time. I was pretty discouraged. I really didn't feel like anybody would ever like me or give me a chance. I mean, who would want to date a blind guy that can't even drive? Sometimes it's hard to be confident when you're at a disadvantage. When I was a kid, they used to ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I'd say, I want to be a preacher. And when I was 16 years old, I preached my very first sermon, and it was hard for me to get up in front of people. I was scared to death. I mean, I couldn't even do a presentation in school without being a nervous wreck. So getting up in front of people and talking about Jesus, I was pretty intimidated. But after a while, people started to hear my story, about my rough upbringing, about my vision, and about my sister, and everything I'd been through. And I started to be able to connect to people. And when I saw this, and I realized that I was helping them, it made it a lot easier for me to go up in front of them. And I knew that this is exactly what I wanted to do with my life. So when I graduated high school, I enrolled in a two-year online school to get my preaching license. And after I finished that, I enrolled in a community college to get a second degree for graphic design. I was a minister doing volunteer work for the youth and young adults at my church, and I was in art school. And things were going pretty well. After one year of being in art school, I was getting pretty stressed out. Besides having transportation issues due to my vision, I was also having issues in classes. Even though I was really good at art and really good at digital art and graphic design, there were certain things that I couldn't perform in very well. Like basic stuff like folding paper and using an X-Acto knife without slicing my finger off. And after talking with some of the teachers and the counselors, we all agreed that it was probably best for me to pull out early and settle for a certification as a desktop publisher and put all my focus back on being a minister. Unfortunately, I wasn't really getting a lot of opportunities for work as a minister. I was still doing a lot of the voluntary work, and I appreciated it, but I wanted the job. Something. 
And since I couldn't get around very easily because of my vision and I wasn't making a lot of connections, it was really hard for me to find opportunities. At the same time, things started happening at my church that weren't so good. I won't go into great details, but let's just say that they were the kind of scandals you hear about on the news. And if that wasn't hard enough, things at home started getting rough too. My parents weren't going to church anymore and they were kind of going back to their old ways and there was a lot of tension in the home. I was probably more discouraged than I had ever been. I mean, I was getting attacked on all fronts and it felt like nothing was working out and I was losing everything that was important to me in life. I felt trapped and I didn't know what to do. Eventually, I decided to move out. I was pretty scared at first, but I did it. And after pulling myself away from all the tension and trouble, I just needed time to heal. And after a while, I started feeling a whole lot better and a lot more hopeful. So that's my story. And yeah, I've been through a lot, but I've never given up, even though I've come pretty close. And yeah, I'm scared. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know what I want. I just want a chance to have a family so that I can be a loving husband and a loving dad, because mine wasn't. I know I have a lot of love to give because my sister taught me that, because I loved her so much. I want a chance to help as many people as I can along the way because I know what it feels like to need help, and I know how good it feels whenever I help somebody, and I know that that's what I'm supposed to do. Life's taught me so much. It's taught me that love is more important than anything, that you can't always follow the rules, of the world and society because it's not a one-size-fits-all deal. You have to follow your heart no matter where it leads you. If you set up expectations and rules for yourself, you're never going to be happy. Sometimes things can come into your life that take you by storm and rock your world upside down. Sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad. It has nothing to do with who you are. I've learned that people are special and they can be challenging but they're also the best part of life. And most of all, I've learned that it's important to give anybody a chance, even if the first impressions aren't good. I've learned that everybody is worth your time, worth your interest, and everybody needs just a little bit of help. I know this because all I've ever really wanted from anybody was a chance, or maybe just a little bit of help. This is my story. You've heard it clear. There's a saying that goes, show your scars because it shows who you are. You know who I am. Thank you for listening. Keep the faith. Never stop trying. Never stop believing. We may not know where our stories are going to end, but if we did, well, spoilers. <laughs>